Hello everyone, welcome to a new course designed especially for aspiring data engineers. We're diving into everything Azure Data Factory has to offer, learning by doing through a real-world project. Get ready to roll up your sleeves and perform various tasks hands-on as we progress. Part 1, Introduction and Setup. We're kicking things off with an introduction in Step 1. Here, we'll be exploring various learning tasks. Learning Task 01, get a clear picture of Azure Data Factory's capabilities through an interactive session. Learning Task 02, unveil the project we'll be working on, we'll dissect the data and its purpose. Learning Task 03, chart the course with a solution architecture overview, see how all the components fit together. Learning Task 04, deepen your understanding of Azure storage solutions with a video and hands-on exercises. We'll set up storage accounts to hold our data. Step 2 focuses on setting up your environment. You'll be actively configuring your resources. Learning Task 05, get a comprehensive environment setup overview, video, and then configure your own development environment. Learning Task 06, learn all you need to know about Azure free accounts, and then create your free account to use throughout the course. Learning Task 07, We'll guide you through creating your own Azure Data Factory. You'll be up and running in no time. Learning Task 08. Create an Azure Data Factory to orchestrate your data flows. Learning Task 09. Create an Azure Storage Account to store your data. This is where your raw data will land. Learning Task 10. Install Azure Storage Explorer for easy data management. Explore and interact with your data. Learning Task 11, set up Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 for scalable data storage. Learning Task 12, create an Azure SQL database for data storage or relational database to hold your process data. Learning Task 13, install Azure Data Studio to manage your databases, visually manage and query your data. Part 2, Data Ingestion. Now, we'll move on to data ingestion in Step 3. Here's what we'll be working on. Learning Task 14, we'll start with an overview of data ingestion from Azure Blob Storage, followed by hands-on exercises. We'll explore how to move data from Blob Storage into your data factory. Learning Task 15, gain a thorough understanding of the copy activity through demos and then configure your own copy activity to move data. Learning Task 16, prepare your environment for data ingestion by configuring necessary settings. Learning Task 17, establish clear naming standards for your data. You'll develop a naming convention for your resources. Learning Task 18, create linked services and data sets to connect to your data sources. Learning Task 19, build an ADF pipeline, your first pipeline to automate data movement. Learning Task 20, explore control flow activities, part one, validation activity, and then implement validation checks in your pipeline. Learning Task 21, Delving into Control Flow Activities, Part 2, Get Metadata, If Condition, Web Activities, followed by Hands-On Exercises. You'll learn to control the flow of your data processing tasks. Learning Task 22, Control Flow Activities, Part 3, will cover the delete activity, and you'll practice using it in your pipelines. Learning Task 23, Understand ADF Triggers, and then configure a Storage Event Trigger to automate data processing. Learning Task 24, Create a storage event trigger to kick off your data pipeline automatically. Step 4 dives into data ingestion from HTTP. We'll be covering Learning Task 25, Section Introduction to Data Ingestion from HTTP followed by an interactive session where you'll design your data ingestion process for HTTP data. Learning Task 26, Grasp the concept of a data source through demos and discussions. Learning Task 27, Data Source, and then you'll configure data access permissions for your ADF. Learning Task 28, Create a Pipeline for Data Ingestion from an HTTP Source. Learning Task 29, Work with Pipeline Variables and Parameters to Manage Dynamic Elements in Your Pipeline. You'll set up variables and parameters to control your data flow. Learning Task 30, Setting Pipeline Parameters and a Schedule Trigger, Define the Parameters and Configure a Schedule to Run Your Pipeline at Specific Intervals. Learning Task 31, Control Flow Activities in Action, will revisit control flow activities and you'll practice using them to orchestrate your data ingestion process. 
Learning Task 32, Linked Service Parameters, learn how to use parameters within linked services and then implement them in your pipelines for reusability. Learning Task 33, Building a Metadata-Driven Pipeline, understand how metadata can streamline pipeline creation. You'll then build a pipeline using metadata for a more dynamic approach. Once we're done with this part of the course, we will then move to part three of the course that is data transformation, where we will get ready to transform our data in step five. Here's what we'll cover. Learning task 34, section overview, the data flow, one, a comprehensive introduction followed by a hands-on session where you'll experiment with data transformations in the data flow UI. Learning Task 35, Unveiling Data Flows, Learn the Core Concepts of Data Flows. Learning Task 36, Learning the Ropes of the Data Flow UI, will guide you through the interface, and then you'll practice building data transformation graphs. Learning Task 37, Define your data transformation requirements, analyze your data, and then specify the transformations needed to achieve your goals. Learning Task 38, Mastering the source transformation, learn how to configure the source transformation and then practice using it to access your data. Learning task 39, filtering your data effectively with the filter transformation. You will implement filters to select specific data subsets. Learning task 40, selecting specific data using the select transformation. You will practice using the select transformation to choose the data columns you need. Learning Task 41, Reshaping Data with the Pivot Transformation. We'll demonstrate the pivot transformation, and then you'll use it to transform your data layout. Learning Task 42, Leveraging the Lookup Transformation for Data Enrichment. Learn how to enrich your data and then practice using the lookup transformation to join data from another source. Learning Task 43, Understanding the Sync Transformation for Data Output. We'll cover the sync transformation, and then you'll configure it to write your transformed data to the desired destination. Learning Task 44, Creating an ADF Pipeline to Execute Your Transformations. You'll build an ADF pipeline that incorporates the data transformations you've defined. Part 4, Basic and Advanced Transformations. Step 6, puts your data transformation skills to the test with assignments. We'll cover. Learning Task 45, Section Overview, the Data Flow, 2, a deeper dive followed by a challenge where you'll independently design a data transformation using data flows. Learning Task 46, we'll challenge you to define your data transformation requirements for this section. Analyze the data and specify the transformations needed to complete the assignment. Learning Task 47, Mastering the Source Transformation Assignment. You'll apply your knowledge by configuring the source transformation to access data for this specific task. Learning Task 48, Selecting Specific Data with the Select Transformation Assignment. Put your skills into practice by selecting the relevant data columns using the Select Transformation. Learning Task 49, Enrichment through the Lookup Transformation Assignment. You'll enrich your data by practicing how to join data from another source using the Lookup Transformation. Learning Task 50, Implementing Conditional Branching with the Conditional Split Transformation. We'll explain the Conditional Split Transformation, and then you'll build logic branches in your data flow based on specific conditions. Learning Task 51, Performing Source Transformations for Additional Dimensional Data. You'll learn how to configure the source transformation for various data sources, and then practice using it to access additional dimensional data needed for your project. Learning Task 52, Creating new data columns using the derived column transformation. We'll demonstrate the derived column transformation, and then you'll use it to create new data columns based on your requirements. Learning Task 53, Aggregating your data with the aggregate transformation. Learn how to summarize your data and then practice using the aggregate transformation to achieve the desired aggregations. Learning Task 54, Combining datasets using the join transformation. We'll cover how to join datasets, and then you'll practice using the join transformation to combine your datasets. Learning Task 55, Reshaping Data with the Pivot Transformation Assignment. You'll refine your data layout by applying the pivot transformation to the data you prepared. Learning Task 56, Sorting your data efficiently with the sort transformation. Learn how to sort your data, and then you'll practice using the sort transformation to organize your data for further analysis. Learning Task 57, Writing your transformed data to the destination with the sync transformation assignment. 
You'll complete the data flow by configuring the sync transformation to write your final transformed data to the desired location. Learning task 58, putting it all together by creating an ADF pipeline to execute your assigned transformations. You'll build a complete ADF pipeline that incorporates all the data transformations you've designed and practiced in this section. Step 7 prepares you for the next session. Learning task 59, We'll guide you through upgrading your Azure free subscription to a pay-as-you-go plan as it is required for upcoming sessions. If you are following along, you do the same. Learning Task 60, time to get your hands dirty. We'll provide instructions and resources to help you prepare the data you will use in the upcoming session. You might need to clean, format, or stage your data for further processing. Part 5, Advanced Processing and Movement. Step 8 explores data transformation using Azure Databricks activities within ADF. Learning Task 61, Section Overview Databricks Activity will introduce you to this functionality through a video and then you'll set up a Databricks environment to follow along with the exercises. Learning Task 62, Creating your Azure Databricks service, you'll provision your own Databricks service within your Azure subscription. Learning Task 63, Setting up an Azure Databricks Compute Cluster, configure a Databricks Compute Cluster to provide the processing power for your Databricks notebooks. Learning Task 64, Mounting your Azure Data Lake Storage for seamless data access. We'll demonstrate how to mount your data lake, and then you'll mount your Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 to your Databricks workspace for easy access to your data. Learning Task 65, Defining Data Transformation Requirements for a Specific Scenario, Population Filtering. We'll present a scenario, and then you'll analyze the data and define the data transformation requirements to be achieved using Databricks Notebooks. Learning Task 66, we'll show you how to leverage a Databricks Notebook activity within your ADF pipeline to perform the transformations. You'll then create a Databricks Notebook containing the Python code to execute the data transformations you defined in Learning Task 65. Finally, you'll configure a Databricks Notebook activity in your ADF pipeline that will call your notebook and process your data. Learning Task 67, Introducing a New Data Transformation Requirement We'll present another scenario, and you'll analyze the data and define new data transformation requirements. Learning Task 68, We'll walk you through a Databricks Notebook walkthrough to address this requirement. We'll provide a sample Databricks Notebook that demonstrates the transformations needed. You'll then use this notebook as a reference to create your own notebook to address the specific requirement. Learning Task 69, Setting up an ADF Pipeline to execute the Databricks Notebook for the new requirement. You'll build a new ADF Pipeline that incorporates a Databricks Notebook activity configured to call the notebook you created in Learning Task 68. Step 9 dives into using the Copy Data activity. Learning Task 70, Section Overview of Copy Data to Azure SQL will provide an introduction to this functionality through a theory session and then you'll practice using the Copy Data activity to move data from your data lake to your Azure SQL database. Learning Task 71, Performing a Copy Data Activity Scenario 1. You'll follow a theory session and configure a Copy Data activity to copy data according to a specific scenario. Learning Task 72, putting your skills to the test with a copy data activity assignment for scenario two. You'll apply your knowledge by independently configuring a copy data activity to meet the requirements of a new scenario. Part six, production pipelines. Step 10 focuses on preparing your pipelines for production use. Learning task 73, will guide you through preparing your ADF pipeline for production deployment. You'll review best practices and configurations to ensure your pipelines are production ready. Learning Task 74, Understanding and Implementing Pipeline Dependencies. We'll explain pipeline dependencies, and then you'll configure dependencies between your pipelines to ensure the correct execution order in your production environment. Learning Task 75, Setting up Trigger Dependencies to Ensure Proper Execution Flow. You'll configure trigger dependencies to control how your pipelines are triggered based on the completion of other pipelines. Part 7, Monitoring and Reporting. Step 11 equips you with monitoring skills. Learning Task 76, Section Overview, How to Monitor an Azure Data Factory, will introduce you to the monitoring capabilities through a theory session and then we will explore the Azure Data Factory monitoring interface. 
Learning Task 77, Understanding What and How to Monitor Within Your ADF Pipelines. We'll define key metrics, and then you'll set up monitors to track the health and performance of your data pipelines. Learning Task 78, Exploring the Azure Data Factory Monitor for Real-Time Insights. You'll use the Azure Data Factory Monitor to visualize pipeline execution details and identify potential issues. Learning Task 79, Creating Alerts to be Notified of Potential Issues You'll configure alerts to receive notifications when your pipelines encounter errors or performance problems. Learning Task 80, Monitoring and Troubleshooting Pipeline Failures We'll show you techniques for troubleshooting pipeline failures, and then you'll practice troubleshooting a simulated pipeline failure. Learning Task 81, Rerunning Failed Pipelines to Ensure Data Processing Continuity You'll learn how to rerun failed pipelines, and then you'll practice rerunning a simulated failed pipeline to recover from errors. Learning Task 82, Generating Reports from Your Monitoring Data for Analysis You'll learn how to generate reports from your monitoring data, and then you'll practice creating a report to analyze the performance of your pipelines. Learning Task 83, Introduction to Azure Monitor for Comprehensive Monitoring Solutions We'll introduce you to Azure Monitor for more advanced monitoring capabilities. Learning Task 84, Introduction to Log Analytics for Detailed Log Analysis We'll provide an introduction to log analytics for in-depth analysis of your pipeline logs. Part 8, Power BI Integration Step 12 explores integrating Power BI with your ADF pipelines. Learning Task 85, Section Overview Power BI Reports will introduce you to the power of data visualization through a theory session and then you'll set up a Power BI desktop environment. Learning Task 86, Getting Started with Power BI Desktop for Data Exploration and Report Creation. You'll follow a guided session to connect Power BI Desktop to your Azure SQL database containing the data processed by your ADF pipelines. Learning Task 87, Exploring and Transforming Data in Power BI Desktop. We'll demonstrate data exploration and transformation techniques, and then you'll practice building data models and visualizations using your data. Congratulations! By following this comprehensive learning journey, you'll gain the hands-on experience and theoretical knowledge to become a proficient Azure Data Factory user. You'll be able to build, deploy, and manage data pipelines that automate data movement and transformation tasks, ensuring a smooth flow of data within your organization. See you in the course.